everybody. Welcome to our virtual open day. Um, I'm seeing uh, everybody coming in from the waiting room. So I'm just giving 30 more seconds. And I can see you've all got your cameras switched off and that's fine because I'm gonna show uh, a little PowerPoint, but hopefully after I finish, I'll switch off the PowerPoint so that my I can come up more and see you. And if you want to put your camera on, ask a question when I finish, please, please do, because it's lovely to see faces. But equally, if you're not comfortable with your camera on, leave it off and just you know type the question into the chat. Um, feel free to type questions as we go along. Uh, or to wait until the end, whatever you prefer. Um, so welcome, my name is Heidi Geismar. I'm the current convener of the MSc in Digital Anthropology here at UCL. It's a course we're really proud of. It's the first an, um, master's level course in digital anthropology of its kind. And it, I think it's still one of the very few uh, that specializes in, world, in the world in this uh, subfield, which very much has been um, actually invented at UCL. I'm just going to go through uh, some of the nuts and bolts of the programme in this PowerPoint. It's not a glamorous PowerPoint. I can assure you we're much more interesting and stylish when we get out of the UCL templates and in person. But just to give you a sense of our core faculty, there are five permanent members of staff teaching on the course. And we also have a, a kind of rotation of really dynamic postdoctoral researchers and PhD students and visiting researchers that contribute to teaching. But here you can see the core team, Hannah Knox, Tone Wolford, Rick Adrians, Danny Miller and myself. Um, the course was set up in 2009 by Danny Miller and it's embedded in the material culture section of the department. I think what makes our contribution to the digital world uh, distinctive is both of those focuses. It's our insistence that we're in a big anthropology department. UCL Anthropology is one of the biggest in the country. It's one of the top rated anthropology departments in the world. Um, and so you have access not just to the expertise of these five people, but to a really large department working in almost every continent and every many countries around the world. And that commitment to anthropological theory, to anthropological methods underpins everything that we do in the digital anthropology programme. We're also divided in our department into sections and digital anthropology sits in what's called the material, visual and digital culture section. And that's another aspect that's very distinctive to UCL, um, where we're world leading and have actually worked to found the subfield of material culture studies. Material culture is basically just the, the study of things in the world um, and works from the assumption that everything has a materiality and that people uh, who make things are also made by the things that they make. So it's a really distinctive way into the digital. People tend to think of the digital as immaterial in the cloud, out there, uh, amorphous. Um, and as you can see from our research interests, we're really interested in the digital as a thing in the world, as something that you hold in your hand to your smartphone, as something enabled by infrastructures of cables, undersea cables or 3G networks. Um, and we really ground, therefore, our understanding of all of the knowledge and intangible qualities that the digital can facilitate in the substance of the of material world. And that's something that we bring that's very distinctive as well. So moving on from our faculty, um, just to show you, some, say something about the structure of the programme. I'm trying to go quickly through all this so till we can leave as much time as possible for questions. Um, the, pre the academic year at UCL, it's, it's quite intensive. We start in September and go through to the following September. But there are really two halves to the year. There's the half of the year where you're going to talk modules and coming to lectures and seminars, working in the library, reading, writing essays, doing your other practice based work. And then there's the half of the year where you're doing your own independent research um, and your, your dissertation. So we and this is how the structure is breaks down for the digital anthropology programme. You have a core digital anthropology module which runs over terms one and two. Um, that meets every week. We have a seminar style um, interaction where you will be preparing texts on themes for class and then discussing them within your group um, in a very intensive way, sometimes in small groups, sometimes with your wider cohort. We try to keep the class size of the programme small. We've never gone a bit above 30 people in the master's programme because we're really committed to this seminar style of teaching. 
And alongside that theory course, which really looks at the big concepts and debates that are important for digital anthropology. So can you only do online in virtual worlds? What is the virtual world? What does that mean? Um, what is the kind of work that goes to produce the digital? Uh, what is its materiality? What is the network? Uh, all of those big meaty questions you explore in the theoretical part of the core. But then we also have on a Tuesday afternoon, a practical component where you think and learn about the methodologies that digital anthropologists use and you apply them in your own original mini fieldwork project. And that gives you a chance to work through those big theoretical questions on the ground to get an understanding of the ethical considerations that you need to take into field work and to have a chance to start doing some field work really of your own and to then think about pre digital presentation methods. So the output of that, of that practical component is not an essay, it's an actual public facing website that you have to present your field work through. So and that's so that's the core of the course. Alongside those two terms cores, you have three options, and I'll show you the list of options in just the next slide. And then after those two teaching terms are over, we have a, a take-home exam, which is not stressful. It's you have five days to write a mini essay just to consolidate your knowledge around the core course, and then you move into working on your dissertation. I'll come back to that. Oh, sorry, this is just a little bit more detail about the core, which I've just told you. And there's a link in here. I don't know if anybody, if Anna, if you can possibly scrape that, I don't know, and put it in the chat. Um, otherwise, I'll do it later. Thanks, Anna. Um, there's a link to some of the practical projects so you can see the kind of work that our students do. Here are some of the examples of options courses. So alongside the core, you take three options during, uh, for, during the full year. Obviously, that gets stretched out if you're part time. And these are just the options that we um, offer from the material culture section. So we have a really good range of cutting edge themes in digital anthropology, anthropology of social media, smartphones, technology, data, infrastructure, extraterrestrial anthropology, the anthropology of the International Space Station, anthropology and photography, the built environment um, and the anthropology of landscape. But you can also take at least one option outside of the department. So if you want to take a course in human computer interaction, digital humanities and archives uh, or philosophy, you can. Um, but you also have access to the range of courses in the department. And we have a really wide range of practical courses that are offered by public anthropology. So you could complement two of these courses with a course, say, on immersive digital storytelling or sound and podcasting or documentary and ethnographic film or you could go into the social anthropology department and do a course about the anthropology of China or the anthropology of Islam or the anthropology of kinship so you can really curate your own interests through the course that you choose to take and, and we really support that you meet with the course convener at the beginning of the year and we talk through what you want to get out of the course and we help you pick the, the modules that are going to work the best for what you want to do it could be going wide and getting as much breadth as possible or it could be going deep and getting as much depth on a very particular topic that you're interested in that you know you want to perhaps work on for your dissertation so by the time you get to the dissertation you've hopefully consolidated your knowledge of digital anthropology theory had a whole set of methods training because alongside the practical we also have a departmental anthropological methods course that you everybody takes all master students take you've done some field work you you understand the ethics and the risks and the kinds of informed consent forms that you need to generate and you've had a chance to really do background research in your areas of interest through your modules and this sets you up to then launch into your own independent research project which is 50% of your total mark you'll be allocated a supervisor who will help you and work very closely to, to develop the project and we really encourage field work you don't have to do field work sometimes people choose not to but most of our students do field work many of our international students do field work in London because it's a new place for them and they'd like to stay in the UK some of our students want to go back to places they've come from or if they're UK students they want to go elsewhere and we try to support that and there's very small pockets of money in the department and a, a fund you can apply for to help you if you want to go somewhere else to do field work 
So from this period of time from May to September, you're doing your primary original research, you're working with your supervisor and you're writing your dissertation. This is the chance to create a showcase that is the launch pad for all our students into what they do next. It's your original contribution to the field. It's really the most rewarding part of the course, but it very much builds on the first half of course and consolidates what you've been learning in the talk component of the course. Um, here are just some photos of former students, all lovely headshots from our LinkedIn page, um, just showing where our students go to. We've got a really diverse cohort. Uh, it's one of my favourite things about the programme. Uh, very international. Uh, we have students from all over the world and really diverse backgrounds and experiences. So we have students that have just finished their undergraduate degrees in anthropology, we have students who have finished undergraduate degrees in completely other fields that they like to come into digital anthropology from. We also have students coming back into study after years of working. Um, sometimes we've had very mature students who've had full careers as consultants in business or in social media and marketing and are, are looking for a big change. We have mid-career people that just want a bit of headspace from the qualitative research they might be already doing as UX researchers or in design. To, have to think through what they're doing in a bit more depth. Um, and it's great to have that diversity of experience in the classroom because the student cohort really supports one another. And of course, we've got this fantastic community now. Having been running since 2009, we have students pretty much placed in every tech company in every country in the world, working in government research, working in UX, working in design, working in local government. And you can see a bit of that in the little profiles here. And what we, we really enable a, a lot of that networking with past uh, students as part of the careers development of, that we support. Ooh, is that the end? I think that's the end. I thought I had a section on dissertation um, topics and I can tell you maybe just a couple of things about that. And just to say also, I've put the front cover of the edited book, Digital Anthropology, which Hannah and I did the second edition of. It was initially edited by Danny and Heather Horst, uh, another former UCL researcher. Um, that's a great place to start if you want to get a sense of the vibrancy of the different projects that we all work on. And another place to look would also be the web page for our Centre for Digital Anthropology, which is our hub for visitors and student activity. We host events, we have an annual lecture, we have reading groups and brown bag lunches, little conferences and presentation days, field trips that we run through that. So just to sort of end by saying, uh, it's a really lively, dynamic environment. There are seminars every day of the week in the department. We have regular social activities. There's a lot of opportunities for students to lead through their interests. So if there's something missing from the course, we can develop a reading group for you. We can bring people in to talk to you. Uh, we can be responsive to current affairs as they unfold. Um, and we communicate really closely with our students and really it's a very much a community of equals all engaged together in the exploration of what is digital anthropology and, and how we can contribute to it. Some of this, the dissertation projects, um, they vary on things like the role of TikTok in documenting the war in Ukraine, which was one of the best dissertations from last year, the role of social media in, I'm just picking up the dissertations that I've supervised over the last few years, the role of uh, social media in gender and sex education in Poland. Uh, we've had the role of uh, museums and galleries in developing immer ideas about immersion through 3D uh, projects like the Van Gogh display. Uh, we've had digitization practices in the Science Museum and the sort of digitization of, scient of scientific knowledge as topics. So really th the breadth is as limitless as your imagination and your interests for dissertations. 